as is our custom on the second Sunday of every month, we give uh, individuals an opportunity to public pro publicly proclaim their faith uh, by way of baptism, and you all get an opportunity to be witnesses. So know that God is holding you accountable, and to some degree, each of you uh, can assist in holding these brothers accountable to their profession of faith. So I'm going to open us up in a, a word of prayer. I'm going to give them an opportunity to share their testimony, and we'll baptize them. Amen? Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's look into the Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you once again uh, that we don't have to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that um, in obedience to your word as we uh, baptize uh, Jason, or both Jasons, Lord, that um, this will serve as a benchmark of obedience in their lives, <coughs> and even in the witnesses of those who uh, sit under the hearing of, of my voice, Lord. Truly, the Christian walk is to begin with obedience and it should end with obedience. So, Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity, Lord, and pray that it will not only be a blessing to your name, but it will encourage others also to do the things Christ has called them to do. Lord, we do love you and we thank you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I guess uh, first up is uh, Brother Jason. We'll give him an opportunity to share. I've already told him that <laughs> you will pack the mic. <laughs> Um, my, my testimony is basically that I've always considered myself to be a good person and throughout my entire life I thought that and I got baptized at the age of seven and I, at seven I said you know I confess Jesus Christ but I had no idea what it meant and from age seven forward, I still consider myself to be a good person. And I, I never really examined myself in light of God's word. I, I lived in rebellion to God from age seven forward. I, I did not care about his laws. I didn't care about his ways. His law says, you know, thou shalt not lie, but I lied. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I, I, I was adultery in, in thought continually. It says, thou shalt not steal, but I stole. I, I had no regard for his law, for his ways. And, and the, the word says that his wrath abided against me. You know, and, and throughout that entire period, I was dead in sin. I, I, I didn't do anything that merited his grace. I didn't deserve his mercy. But the good news is that while I was yet a sinner, Jesus Christ died for me. And I, I, I don't know exactly when I got saved, but I can say today beyond a shadow of a doubt that I know that God dwells in me. I know that he has saved me. I know that he has taken me from, from death to life. And I, I love him for it. And he is just truly a faithful God. And um, that's my testimony. Amen. He knows Christ to be a faithful God. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for this awesome privilege you've given us and all who are in attendance here, Lord, to witness this great work that you've first done in Jason's heart. Lord, as we heard his testimony, O oh God, that, Lord, um, he had no regard for you, Lord. But your word does say that faith comes by hearing, hearing by your word, O oh God. And it was through the hearing of your word, O oh God, that convicted his soul in need of a Savior, O oh God. And through, Lord, the testimony he's given, and, and the faith that he's placed forth and this outward action of already what you've done in his heart. Lord, we now baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. church I heard some um, really really important things and that was I could potentially go to hell 
and I didn't want that for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so the background that I come from, um, they said that, okay, you need to do a few things in order not to go to hell. And so I said, you know, that I have to do these things because I don't want to go there. And so when I was around 11 years old, um, I got baptized, and I saw it as more of a step away from um, the fiery furnace rather than a step towards God. And um, this has been something that's been on my mind for months, and God just allowed um, definitely divine intervention to take place and me to actually make the decision to um, be baptized again because it's, it's definitely a display of what God is doing inside of me, the transformation that he's doing inside of me, um, sanctification. And I just want you know, to share that with you all to display that and so on. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I wanted to share a little bit. Um, those of you know Jason. Jason is quiet, but then he's not quiet. <laughs> All you got to do is say hello and don't walk away. <laughs> he will have a discussion with you. So praise the Lord. Um, I love you, brother. Um, young man who loves the Lord, who's designed to uh, follow him wholeheartedly. I remember uh, not too long ago you did the mission trip and you were uh, looking for support. And God blessed you and enabled you to do that, man. And that was an encouragement to all of the uh, household of faith, so I just want to continue to do everything I can to encourage you to walk with the Lord, even our little Friday night uh, out hop conversations, uh, hopefully those will continue to encourage one another. Um, and also, too, I just want to say to you guys, you know, as, um, uh, you know, in the ancient world, you know that, like, there was no whole lot of uh, cards you signed on the back of chairs, it wasn't these elaborate edifices you see in Christianity in our day. The main way people show the world they belong to Jesus Christ was through being obedient, by, through, through baptism. And it's amazing to me how, for those of us who've come to faith in Jesus Christ who haven't been baptized, you're kind of like a contradiction in terms. Folks like you did not exist in the ancient world. And it was because if you made a profession of faith, you were clearly marked out. You were shown that you were going against the grain of this world and you were following the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I think too many of us want to kind of ride the fence, and that's why maybe some of us haven't been baptized. I encourage you, I encourage you, I implore you, as Acts 2.38 says, after Peter gave his stirring message of the gospel, the very first command he gave was to do what? Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this is the way it's supposed to happen. You profess your faith, and is evidenced by a public proclamation showing forth to the world that you no longer belong to it, but you now belong to Jesus Christ. So if you've come to know the Lord and you haven't done your due diligence, your full obedience, come and make your obedience complete. Amen? Mm -hmm. right, let's baptize you. You want to pray? Let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, once again, we, we, we praise you and give you honor for this awesome privilege, Lord. Um, as we've all heard, Lord, um, Lord, uh, Jason's been baptized before, but Lord, it was through ignorance, oh God. And now he does it through knowing you, the true and living God. Lord. And his desire, Lord, is uh, to be continue to be sanctified for you and be transformed more and more into your likeness. And so now, Lord, we, in the presence of your angels, Lord, just baptize him in the name of the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus. <laughs>